Hello everyone, I'm Mark Snodgrass, and today I want to talk to you about how to use Domo to uh, fill in dates that might be missing in your data if you just have a uh, start and stop date. Uh, perhaps for like uh, active employees that maybe you just have a start and end date for, or number of active subscriptions, uh, a lot of different varieties of ways. This is an example of my demo data set. Looks like where I've got a, a start date and an end date, uh, but I need to show that they're active between, you know, February and July. So I need rows for March and April and May and June, and my data set doesn't have that. So when I don't have that, uh, my line graph kind of looks like this, which is not uh, very good, kind of based off the start date and obviously not capturing everything that we need to capture. So luckily we can uh, take care of that in Magic ETL. Uh, the key thing you wanna use uh, as part of your transformation is this Domo calendar data set. This can be found with the Domo dimensions connector and choosing the calendar data set. And it's uh, extremely useful, it's used in a lot of different ways. It contains dates uh, from the past to the the future and it keeps getting updated and you see it's got a, a date column one row for every day of the year going forward and then it also has broken up you know segments of that date you know the year the quarter the month the day the week uh, lots of things in here but primarily i'm going to be using just the the date field and the and the day field here so it's going to get started you're going to bring in that data set and then the next step is because I just need to know, I just need, I'm going to graph by month. So I just need one month out of the, uh, that calendar data set. So I'm going to filter to day equals one. So I'll just get January 1st, February 1st, March 1st, so on and so forth. Keep going forward and getting that one that kind of reduces the size of my data set, but also just gets me to what I need. And then I'm just going to filter out other columns because now all I need is the date column here. So you see the date I've got um, February, as I said, March going forward, all these different years. Um, and it's going to go into the future. Um, the preview is only going to show me 100, first 100 rows, but I know it's there. Next thing we're going to do is create a constant uh, for a join key. And so I just create a field called join key, and it's an integer of one. I'm going to do that on my date, uh, my actual data set here. So here's that Excel file with those fields in there. I'm going to set a join key here with a value of one. And then that's how I'm going to join my data between those two. So I can do an inner join. I'm going to join on the join key. I'm going to drop this right one. What this is going to do, this is going to kind of uh, make my data set a lot bigger. It's going to give me more than I need at the moment. Uh, so if we look at this, for that uh, first record, you know, even though it's a start date and a stop date between February and July of 2022, it's going to build out rows for all these older years. And that's okay for right now. I'm not too concerned. So we're going to filter that out so that your data set does get bigger uh, momentarily. But then here is where you can shrink it down to what actually is uh, applicable to your months. So this is a very useful function uh, built in uh, to the formula, either in beast mode or in the formula tile in magic ETL is the last date function. I find it really the easiest way to compare the month and the year uh, between two dates. So basically this is just gonna move this date to the last day of that month. So if it's you know, February, it's gonna move to February 28th or uh, if it's March, gonna move it to March 31st. And same with the start date. So if it's March, going to move it to March 31st. That lets me evaluate, hey, is this in the same month and year uh, as the start date? And then so is it greater than or equal to that start date? And then, hey, is that date from that de calendar dimension less than or equal to the stop date? And if so, then that lets me uh, just filter down to those rows. So then you see now my... Uh, filter now applied. So now I'm starting with just February 2022. That's where my start date is. Then I've got 
March, that's inside that, so on and so forth. It's going to go down, filter down to just the, that date range. And then here, I'm just cleaning up the columns. I'm going to call that date field from the app, from the calendar dimensions. I'm going to call it active date. Let me uh, remind myself what that is. And I'm just bringing in the other columns from my original data set just to help. Uh, Maybe I want to use them on the hover text settings or something like that, or something in the drill path. And then I can just output that. And then what that looks like then is actually a line graph, line graph that actually goes from the beginning of my data set February to October. You see, that's kind of the, the range. If we were to look at this original data set, February is my earliest date. October is my latest date. So my line graph is now populating for every month in there and then showing when there's kind of two active accounts going on or account has two active services going on during those months. And we can take in the analyzer in here just to help you see. So I put that active date in the X axis, just put in uh, the service as account and then I put the account ID as the series. So don't actually use the start and stop date on in the x-axis or anything like that because we're going to use that active date that we're generating where those active months are as our x-axis that's kind of the key so again i think this is really useful for those that need to show kind of active employees or active uh, services uh, where you just have that start and end date and you need to build out those months through there so this uh, calendar dimension set comes in really handy to, to do that. And again, this process is really fast. Even if I had a much larger data set, this might explode out to several million rows temporarily, but then it's going to get filtered down. So it uh, can run uh, really quickly for you. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, please, as always, feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you.